next Sicilian game is going to be one of those examples of why you don't need to mix and match opening or structure ideas. Because I have gotten this position, colors reversed, so many times that I feel like it's just a trivial win. Now, the Grand Prix attack, it's good. I recommend it to a lot of students. It's a structurally based opening. And I worked on, when I was a content editor for Chessable, Grandmaster Perlstein's Grand Prix Attack course, where he made significant improvements over chess openings for White Explained, which came out like a decade ago now. And he had some interesting ideas with A4 at a key moment. So if you like the Grand Prix Attack for White, take a look at that course on Chessable. But this will quickly not be a Grand Prix as my opponent played c4, and now we're in a weird English where f4 was completely unnecessary. And you go, well, isn't this kind of like a good Dutch where he's got more control? Well, we'll see quickly that Black's plan is going to be a typical English plan or a Sicilian plan where I'm just going to play for a b5 break after getting everything set up. Well, I've got a clamp on d4, so Let's go ahead and just, that is my square forever. And after d6, this is already a, a critical moment as black has a few different structures you can choose from, but e5 at pretty much any point is just going to weaken the structure for white, so I'm not worried about that. And the typical plan would be to have this bishop, say, here in the Grand Prix, the castle, go queen e1, queen h4, g3, and then they need this knight to attack with. They play f5. It's, it, you need all these elements. So already, this bishop's best square is going to be on e2. There's not really an attack. So you just set up a position where you can't really attack from without causing significant weaknesses. And the only piece that could be a problem for me is this knight. So I immediately play bishop g4. So I'm like, okay, we're just going to get rid of this guy. And then I have even more control over d4. So bishop e2. And notice, I'm not going to take immediately on f3. I want him to play h3 to waste time. And in the meantime, I'm going to play knight f6. So, yep. Bishop e3. Okay, you're starting to show that you could potentially play d4. Well, I'm going to go knight d7 and still mine. The knight is out of the way. And after queen d2, where are we playing in this position? Is it the king side? No, that would weaken our pawn structures. The center? No, nope. white controls the center. Queen side. So let's chip away. And this is that classical English or Sicilian plan with rook b8. And finally, we see h3. You got tired of that bishop being there. Only now do I take a6. And you'll occasionally see moves like a4 here to try to slow down the process. My opponent, in fact, did something even worse than a4, a3. So now I go knight d4, eyeing this key square. And we see defense already. It's not going to help if he captures on d4 because the only thing that could potentially keep white in the game in the future is the bishop pair. And this is going to go south quite quickly from this point. b5. And let's break through. Take, take. Like I said, the bishop pair is the only thing that can save him, so I'm happy to get rid of it. I have control over the only open file. Now we're going to exert even more pressure. And also, hitting here, hitting here, knight d5. I believe the engine wanted e6 here to even turn the screw even harder, but like a rook is a rook. Give me that. And the best piece he has is the knight on d5. So I wasn't looking to play e6. I was looking to force trades, simplify the win, and try to be clinical here. So queen c2, and best is definitely to take on d5. As taking on b3, I'll take on e3 with the knight. 
and that's an ending I'm happy with. And here, the rest of the game is going to be trivial, but I think it's instructive to show how you need to be clinical in these types of positions. So the only way that he could potentially hurt me is checkmate on the dark squares. So I want to get his queen off the board because every endgame, white's just completely busted. So let's get this queen to an awkward square. And, sir, would you like to trade? No? Okay, let's keep your queen tethered to defense to stop checkmate. And at some point, I can come over and say, there's nothing you can do about this. So bishop h6. Well, you're forcing my hand to move the rook away from the defense of the king side. So let's go ahead and get some ideas. Maybe rook b1 is an idea. So rook c1. And back to my original plan. I just want to make sure you don't have counterplay. Kill your opponent's ideas. They can't kill you. He takes. Oh, in between move with check. Takes there. And I had already seen the idea, which the engine considers the best move to be f6, with the idea of g5 to seal in the flavor of the bishop. But I went rook e2 first, as it's just a flexible move. The only weakness in the structure is the base of the pawn chain. So I make sure that this open file is critical and this open file is critical because those are the only access points to the position to attack me. And I've got the extra idea to add pressure here. So I saw with no weaknesses, no problems. So rook f3, threatening to trap the bishop, so he runs. Now that the king is holding the e-pawn, my rook on e2 is free to dance, but he's on a great square. How about we just go after the weaknesses, and there's really nothing that can be done to stop me from just collecting here. And he's got to defend. He's got nothing else. And runners are going to run. Makes life easy. And that will do it for this game. The lesson here is don't mix and match your openings. Engine may say, oh yeah, White's fine. White's got that first move advantage. He's playing defense. Don't put yourself in those positions when you have plenty of other good options like the Grand Prix attack.